Welcome to Two Way Cops, Cops Supporting Gun Rights. My name is Keith. In this episode, we're going to talk about the lady that was naked and shooting at passing cars and at people in Oakland on the approach to the Bay Bridge. Now, if you like hearing content about the Second Amendment and from a cop's perspective, hit that like button. You're in the right place. We hope to give you some good information. And one more thing before we get into it. If you're new here, my name is Keith. I am a 30-year retired law enforcement officer from Northern California. In fact, I worked in the same county that this video takes place in. So I have a unique perspective that I want to talk to you about when it comes to self-defense and what you would do in a similar situation or what you could do in a similar situation. All right, so before we get started, let's watch a news story from ABC News about this incident so we can see what happened and then let's wrap our heads around it, okay? Let's watch. Terror in traffic lanes, a naked woman armed with a gun and shooting at passing vehicles. Yeah, it's a lady. Oh, Whoa! This dangerous and bizarre scene unfolding on the Bay Bridge right near the Oakland Toll Plaza. She ran out. She ran out? Yeah, the, the gun's up. Holy dude. A number of drivers calling 911 and dispatchers alerting all available units to the threat. Again, she's completely naked out of the vehicle now. She is shooting at a car now. Again, she's shooting at vehicles now. But she is actively shooting. Two co-workers were heading across the bridge when they came upon a car parked sideways and blocking multiple traffic lanes. That's when they noticed the naked woman. I heard that's, the pop, yeah. like I saw her walking around and I heard, and I was like, oh, that's a, that's a gun. That's actually a gun. How do I get out of here? I can't just stay here. We're sitting ducks. You have nothing but a windshield protecting us. That woman later dropping the gun and then arrested by responding officers. That front row seats, man. It's buns and guns right now, man. It's not known if any of the shots she fired actually hit any vehicles. She's currently in custody and undergoing a mental evaluation at a local hospital. Okay, so a few things to unpack on this one. Unique experience with this place. I've driven through here a bunch of times, including in a patrol car. If I was rolling up on that and she was actively shooting, I would not stop my car, get out, and engage in a gunfight with her. I literally would just use my car as the deadly force to stop her. Now, I'm sure it sounds, well, it sounds like she may have run out of ammo and she put the gun down right when the cops pulled up. So some other unique perspectives that we need to keep in mind about this area, and some of you might be in the same place. The district attorney, Pamela Price, who is uh, now the, the DA there, is under a lot of fire because she is not charging criminals with the stuff that they do. As an example, I'm hearing a rumor that a two-year-old was murdered and she sent a memo to the district attorney that was prosecuting the case to find sentencing other than jail time. So no jail time for somebody that kills a two-year-old. Now, that's just a rumor that we hear, but from what we've seen, she has been letting criminals go. On the contrast, on the flip side of that, there is another DA there who specifically said in a prosecution of an officer going on in that county where the officer shot somebody when he was defending his own life, said, quote, I am here to prosecute cops. So what's going to happen to you when you use any kind of a force to defend yourself when you're in a county like that? L.A. County, you have the same problem with your DA, Contra Costa County, and not just California. You can look at Illinois, New York, and many of the other liberal places where you have these communist DAs that are basically going to try and prosecute you for defending your life. So let's talk about some of the things that you can do in a case like this, okay? Some of the things that you can do, number one, is you can just pull over and hope that you don't get hit. Uh, there is a lot of protection in a car. Uh, and when I get into this, don't hammer me in the comments. You got to listen to the whole thing. I'm not advising you to, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I would do, but let's talk about what, what, what your options are all the way across the board. So you could literally just pull over, duck down, and you do have a lot of protection within your car. But that's not a great plan. Hoping that you don't get shot is not a good way to go. And also you're on a 10 lane roadway. Uh, you have to worry about somebody hitting you. And then also you're kind of screwing everybody else behind you because now they're stuck in the line of fire as well. And something else to keep in mind is when these officers are responding, some are coming from San Francisco across the bridge. They're not going to be able to get there because they can't get through because everybody stopped. They can come from the Oakland side. And if they come from the Oakland side, they are going to have to drive on the wrong side of the freeway to probably get there. And it, there, there's, it's going to be tough to get into that call. The other thing to think about is the 911 system in both these cities have the longest times in the nation for answering 911. In fact, an officer in Oakland was off duty two blocks from the police station. I'm just assuming he was probably either going to or from work. And he was stabbed in the neck by a uh, transient woman. And he called 911 because he was literally dying and uh, nobody answered the phone. And that's a routine thing. So even your 911 call, I wouldn't count on it going through in this particular area. 
Uh, it's funny how that only happens in Democrat controlled areas, but I digress. All right, so you can pull over and hope for the best and call 911. Your other option is if you're legally carrying, you can pull over and engage in a gunfight. I wouldn't do that either because you have to worry about your backdrop. If you look at the backdrop here, it's a big open area. You can hit other people. Uh, you're moving, you're basically shooting at a fat naked woman running back and forth across the freeway. And it's a little bit more difficult than you would think. Certainly, well, here's the other problem is that county specifically, Alameda County, uh, even though we have the latest Supreme Court case decision that says you have to provide uh, CCW to those people, they are still not doing it in a timely manner. In fact, they are charging you exorbitant amounts of money. I've got one friend who's trying to get a CCW there now, and he's about $800 into doing what they want him to do so he can do a constitutionally legally protected right. It was also recently upheld by the Supreme Court. So you're kind of screwed there if you're, in, if you're illegally carrying and then you get in a gunfight you, after you shoot her and you drive away, they're going to find out who you are. There's so much video going on. So you're kind of screwed in that respect too, right? Now I'm legally carrying. I can tell you right now, I would not stop and engage her in a gunfight. Uh, I had a friend, I went to sniper school. And when I went to sniper school, the guy I was paired up with was from another agency. He was working undercover. We were both working undercover narcotics at the time. After he bought some drugs from a drug dealer, he drove away, arrest team came in. He shot it out with the arrest team and was holding him off pretty good. So he just looped back around, ran the guy over and killed him. Uh, I think that's a great tactic. Uh, you're, you can either hit him with a tiny little bullet or you can hit him with a 2,000 pound car or even a bigger car, right? So <clears throat> there's two different things that can happen here. You can intentionally run her over while she's shooting at you to protect yourself. And if you do that, you'll, you'll be effective, okay? Uh, after you run that person over, I probably wouldn't stick around because she can still get back up and shoot at you. Or you drive away, she can still lay there and still shoot at you. So I would drive away, but I would pull over down the road where it's safe and then call 911 and let them know what occurred. The problem with that is it's an intentional act. It's not an accident. So your insurance isn't going to cover the damage. The other thing is they're going to treat it like a deadly force incident. So they're going to take you into custody and then they're going to question you, which by the way, don't talk to the police. Okay. I, I know it sounds weird. And me and uh, Matt and I, my other co-creator on 2A Cops, me and Matt differ on this. Um, Matt has uh, at least one OIS or officer involved shooting under his belt. Um, I think he might have two. I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, his thing is he wants you to just give a brief statement to the police to kind of clear the air. And I get where he's going from, but I subscribe to the theory of no good can come from talking to the police, even when you are the police. Um, I wouldn't wait till I get a lawyer there and then I would go ahead and talk, but it's an intentional act, not an accident. They're going to treat it like a deadly force incident. And uh, it'd be just as if you had shot her. Another option would be, and I'm not telling you to lie. I am not telling you to do anything. I'm merely going over options here. If you ducked down and try to break the, basically you're in an ambush and you try to break the ambush while your head is down below, because that's the safest place to be is put your head below the dashboard and hope that you don't get domed while you're driving through. And you break that ambush and you drive through and you accidentally hit her, tracking what I'm saying? And you accidentally hit her and you drove through and then you realize after you drove through, I, I think I might've hit her. You pull over and go, well, I didn't mean to hit her. I was literally getting shot at and I put my head down so I wouldn't get hit. And I drove as fast as I could to get out of there. She's at fault for the accident. She's a pedestrian in the roadway, specifically for California's 21954 via the vehicle code. Uh, one good thing about being a traffic cop, I've investigated not somebody getting shot at and then running over that per said person. You know, I've done a, so, quite a few collision investigations and uh, it is an accident. Now your insurance will cover what happens to your car. You know, the damage that she's going to create when you plow into that heifer on the side of the freeway. And the other thing is the cops are going to initially treat that. There's two things that happen. There's the shooting, her felonious shooting at you. And then there's also the collision. And then they're going to investigate that as a collision. And you are not at fault. Uh, you are obeying the rules of the road. It is quite reasonable for somebody to duck and drive quickly to get out of there. There's no vehicle code violation. You're good to go. I know there's a lot of cops that follow us. Do me a favor, chime in on the whole, it's an accident and how that's going to be viewed. Um, be interesting to hear your perspective. Okay. So again, to wrap this up, your choices are pull over and hope you don't get shot. Your second choice, 
is to go ahead and engage in a gunfight, which I think both of those options are bad, okay? Um, engaging in a gunfight, like there's better options. And pulling over and hope you don't get shot, that's just stupid. If there is to go ahead, intentionally run her over to stop her felonious actions. It is deadly force, it is justified, but you're in a county that is going after cops for defending their own lives and prosecuting them. And you have a communist George Soros backed DA. What do you think your chances are of getting unscathed and not having your pocketbook drained by some communist? Your fourth option is to go ahead and just get your head down, drive through it, and hope for the best. And on the side chance if you accidentally hit her, it's an accident. Primary collision factor, which is what we call the primary reason for the crash, was going to be 21954 via the vehicle code, pedestrian on the roadway. Traffic guys, I wasn't a good traffic cop. I was a great narc, but not a good traffic cop. So if I'm wrong on the vehicle code section, I'm sure there's one specifically for pedestrian on the highway, but let me know. Um, that's it. Why do I do these videos? Hang with me. Don't hang up yet. You guys all drop off really quick. Why do I do these videos? Because the active cops right now can't speak out and say the truth. I am not giving you advice. You have got to consult a lawyer. You have got to make sure you know the laws in your area. I'm just telling you all the different options that could come out of a specific incident and for you to have better decision making. This is what I do, guys. When I, when I uh, think about these things, I literally daydream when I'm driving. And I think about all the bad things that can happen and all my different choices. And what I have found out that when there is a critical incident, I go back to what I've thought about and what I've trained for. So seek training. Make sure you have good everyday carry. I just did a video on traveling EDC. I just put it up on uh, Saturday. Go to the link, go take a look, and go look at what I carry in case something like this happens to you while you're on the road and traveling. Do me a favor, hit subscribe, like, and comment. Uh, it, the algorithm loves it, and uh, we're trying to get more subscribers. We want to get more of the word out. Do me a favor, share this video to your bestest buddy and let them know that they should follow and watch it. All right, my friends, just remember your ABCs, always be caring.